Um, this is another in the series, First Reads, where I do a first reading of a poem. That means I don't read it to teach it or to explain it to somebody else. I just read it with sheer joy of it. It might completely change my mind later on if I go back to read it and think about how to put it in the writer's context, the tradition, whatever. I might realize I was totally wrong the first time around, but that's just it. Just enjoying it. So Kate McGowan, this is from Bird Coat Quarterly. Consequences in Water. I always pick a poet I, you know, I don't know or don't know very well at all. And I don't know Kate McGowan's work at all. Consequences in Water. So when I look at a poem for the first time, I always look at the form and just to kind of see what's going on. And this one looks like a traditional form because it's got these three lines, which, you know, automatically makes me think Terzarima, Villanelle. Um, but it's definitely not a Villanelle from the last of it. And I look at the ends, I don't see rhyme, stare, just small on his own, gunshots, ocean. Okay, I don't see that. And I, I like to count it, right? For all of us who try the dim light, who stare, other stars for understanding whose eyes adjust, it's dusk. So the, the line links are different. Let's see if it's here. As a pressure yesterday, I screamed at my own. So line links are different. So I'm assuming, you know, I might have a different concept if I read everything and look at everything. But I think it's open form, just formatted to look um, very orderly. And I'll just look at the first line. For all of us who dread the dim light, who stare. That feels very iambic, but I don't know if it's... Uh, Iambic because English is just natural iambic, or if the writer is doing this for all of us who dread the dim light. There's a shift from iambic right there, the dim light who stare, but the rest the rest of the line straight up iambic. Are the stars that's two unstresses and stress for understanding whose eyes adjust. So it's not straight up iambic, but you know, largely iambic is in English. So let's read for meaning at this point. Consequences in water, that's a pretty loaded title. Um, I think there could be lots of consequences in water. So we'll see what happens. For all of us who dread the dim light, who stare at the stars for understanding, often listen for sound first before meaning, who dread the dim light, the DDs, who, uh, who, who stare, who dread, whose eyes at dusk, a DD. There's not a lot of nice sounds here. This first stanza in a little bit more is all one sentence. For all of us who dread the dim light, who stare at the stars for understanding, whose eyes adjust to dust, perfect smallness is a pressure. I think a lot of us feel that, like this sense of like people who are looking for understanding in, at things, who look at the stars, who, who feel oppressed a little bit by the smallness of the human condition, who are looking for things. This feels like some kind of pressure. Yesterday, I screamed at my own end's consequence. This is a great little short line after a longer line makes you focus on it. Yesterday, I screamed at my own end consequence. I think a lot of us have moments of doing that, of feeling consequential, inconsequential um, in life. My guttural yell rifled like gunshots. It reached nothing, unlike the ocean's prompt. So this is a great little thing here. It's a guttural yell, and it blows like gunshots. It doesn't get anywhere because of the smallness of a person reach nothing unlike the ocean's prompts touching wherever they, the ocean touches everything all around it's its own hugeness doesn't have to yell it just is there it's of consequence because of the size and the naturalness of it unlike the human on tribal islands i didn't expect the tribal here but whatever Washerwomen scrub laundry on breakwater rocks. Some men canoe to an isthmus for the best catch. And through spume barrels, a child stands on board and ducks. To most people don't question, but pay tribute to the sea's foam thudding their shores. The water's high tide petticoats that sift all kinds of sky, sun, cloud, airplane reflections. This is fun. And this kind of sense in which people are just doing their thing, which is they look at fairly little things don't question the water that's there that's foaming up on their shores and that itself contains all of these different reflections on it the sky the sun the clouds all of this comes on there i wish i could read those scribblings on the surface i, I like really like this image it reminds me years ago i was a sailor um, and i would do races and i remember watching the water the light reflect on the surface of the water and it looked like it was a language being written on things that I 
wish that I could understand. And I f- feel like that's going on here. I wish I could read the scribblings or tonight's half moon that tugs me. There's that sense in which the moon feels like it's speaking to you sometimes. Blue driftwood st- striped with salt piles itself on shore. This driftwood's piling itself up on the shore right now. Sails of shadows. Uh, fleets, armadas, right? These sense in which all the stuff is written on the surface, the stars, the clouds, right? All of this stuff is there. Move over all the fish in their crazy calligraphy language. So that's fun image, I think. The image that the fish are underwater and looking up at this language above where the clouds, the stars, like whatever the winds, ripples, the suns, the airplanes are written on it for them to understand. Now I look upward and spy the ink smudges of bat wings going everywhere, which is kind of similar thing here. Uh, the analogy, the connection between the fish, you know, the fish look up and see this written on the water's surface, just like humans look up and, you know, feel the pressure of the sky pushing down, like the fish feel the pressure of the water. They don't always pay attention to it. Like, you know, like us, we don't always pay attention to the pressure of of the sky, we're just in it, right? Um, but it's almost if you could look up and you could read it, if you could, you could read the surface of it, what's above you. I look upward and spy the ink smudges of bad wings going everywhere, nowhere. They go everywhere and nowhere in this consequential space of the air, of the, of, of the atmosphere, just like the consequential space of the ocean, which goes everywhere and nowhere. Fun, I like this poem. Um, I, you know, like I said, sometimes I'd go back and I might completely read this in a different way. But I, I think this is, a, this is a very fun poem playing with this sense of human smallness, the consequentialness of nature and how we try to understand what's there in front of us, understand, read, read into um, the natural space and find our place in it. We try to stare at the stars for understanding this, she says. So Kate McGowan, Consequences in Water.